Hi, I'm Jeremy Fry, senior pastor here at Advent. And I'm Alicia Ungs, the pastor of discipleship here at Advent. We are part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the ELCA, which means you are welcome here no matter who you are or where you've come from. We are so glad to have you here with us today. That's right. So no matter your age, your race, your gender identity, your sexual orientation, or your social economical status, you are a beloved child of God, beautifully and wonderfully made as you are. And you are accepted here, and you can be a part of any ministry, any worship, or any event here at Advent. We're so glad you're joining us today for worship. In this worship recording, you'll find several things, including a scripture reading, the sermon of the day, and a worship song as part of this. If you want more information about Advent and our ministries, please go to our website, adventbrevard.org. Thanks again for joining us today. We're so glad to have you. May God bless you today and always. The Holy Gospel this morning according to Luke. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from the God who is, who was, and who is to come. Amen. Next week is Christmas. Next week. Can you believe it? it? It seems a little unbelievable, but as we just heard from one of the kids, only eight days until Christmas Day, the countdown is here. Even though it seems like just yesterday we were starting our journey into the season of Advent and in the beginning of the new church year, and yet here we are on our last weekend before we celebrate Christmas and the birth of Jesus. We have spent time over the last few weeks hearing messages about hope and peace in the light of grace being reminded of God's promises for us to bring the peace that passes human understanding and to shine the light of hope even in the darkest of times. And this week we light that third candle, the candle of joy. We find ourselves focusing in on that joy that comes with this special season. And there are so many reasons to be joyful in this time, both big and small things that bring us joy. One of the greatest joys in my life more recently has been to watch as my baby niece grows up a little bit. She's only about 10 months old, but it seems like every time I see a new picture of her, she's grown a little bit more, growing and changing every single day. And I still remember that first day when she was born and I got the message from my sister-in-law with a photograph of their newborn child. And I was so excited in that moment when I saw that text message that I found myself physically shaking with joy. And when we have these moments of great joy, we do often react in a physical way. We might shake as I did, we might cry tears of joy, and for some of us, if you're feeling really spry, you might jump up and down with joy. But whatever the action, it seems that when we are filled with joy, 
we often can't contain it. So that's why I'm not so surprised to hear about how in today's gospel story, Elizabeth's baby John leaped for joy in the womb. When she was filled with the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth must have felt overwhelmed with the joy of knowing that Mary was carrying their future Lord and Savior, and the baby in Elizabeth's womb felt it too. I can imagine as she prepared to greet Mary and saw in that moment the beautiful hope for the future, her face might have lit up with excitement. She might have been shaking for joy, so much that she can't contain the joy within her. And she calls out to Mary, it says in a loud voice, offering her words of blessing. Elizabeth was ready to greet the light of grace, Jesus, even before he was born. And she also knew that the baby inside her womb was the one who would be preparing the way. Both women were carrying children who would bring hope and peace and joy to the next generation and forever onward from that moment. And now imagine for a moment how this encounter might have made Mary feel. Because when she left from where she was, she didn't just go to visit Elizabeth for a social call. The scripture says that she left with haste. She left in a hurry because her life was in danger. At that time, it wasn't just something looked down upon to have a child out of wedlock, and she wasn't yet married to Joseph. She knew that the law said she could be killed for this. So as she traveled, I imagine she felt a lot of fear and uncertainty. She knew that she had said yes to the Holy Spirit, that she had said yes to this call of God to become the mother of Jesus, but I think knowing that sometimes wasn't very helpful as she traveled. I don't think it made it so much easier. I wonder if as she went, she might have struggled with those feelings of shame, even though she knew she had said yes to God. So what an amazing miracle it is that when Mary arrives, she is greeted by Elizabeth with such overwhelming joy. I can't imagine the relief Mary must have felt after being weighed down for so long with this fear and this shame. Because when Elizabeth sees her, she doesn't meet her with judgment or questions. Instead, she looks at Mary and calls her blessed. Blessed for carrying baby Jesus. And blessed for believing in the fulfillment of what was spoken by the Lord. Because even in the midst of her fear, Mary still said yes to God's call. Mary trusted in God's promises of hope and peace and joy. She trusted that they were true. And so can we. It might seem hard sometimes, because our lives aren't perfect. But Mary's life wasn't really perfect either. The world around her wasn't perfect. Far from it. The world as Mary knew it was one that was in a state of chaos and confusion and despair. I think it's easy when we get to this part of the season and we look at those sweet little nativity scenes everyone gathered around the manger little baby jesus is in there in that little manger and everyone's there with the wise men and the animals and the shepherds and mary and joseph and the angels everybody's gathered around in this beautiful moment proclaiming about jesus being born it's wonderful 
But when we look at that picture-perfect scene, it's really easy to forget that that moment wasn't really picture-perfect at all. But celebrating a season of joy isn't about the world being perfect. It wasn't about being perfect back then, and it certainly is not about being perfect now. But we trust in the one who is perfect, the light of grace, Jesus. The one who brings us hope, peace, and joy, not just during the holiday season, but all year long. So we can carry that joy with us just as Mary and Elizabeth carry their joy. And we find our greatest joy in the moment when we celebrate that birth of the little baby Jesus. Knowing that even when the world seems dark, the light of grace shines in the darkness brings us an eternal promise that no matter what we face in life, we don't face it alone because the story doesn't end with Mary and Elizabeth. It doesn't end on Christmas Day when Jesus is born and we have that lovely manger scene. Here's the strangest part about the season of Advent and the Christmas season because Even as we're getting ready to celebrate the birth of baby Jesus, even while we do that, we know that in just a few short months from now, we'll be remembering something else about Jesus' life. We will be remembering his death on the cross and how he rose again three days later when we celebrate Easter. Because this gospel story that we hear today with Mary and Elizabeth is only the beginning. Those babies who hadn't even been born yet were destined to fulfill God's promises to the world. Baby John to prepare the way for Jesus. And baby Jesus to live, to die, and to rise again so that we all have hope in eternal life. And that promise, that promise of eternal life brings our great joy. Joy in knowing that God loves you. And God promises to always be with you, even when your life isn't picture perfect. So I pray that you are able to find joy in this special season as we finalize our preparations for Christmas next week. May your holiday season be filled with hope, with peace, with joy of the light of grace, Jesus Christ. The one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come. The one who promises to really bring joy to the world. Amen. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? 
says, did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And when you kissed your little baby, you kissed the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you know? God is good, and all the time. We're ahead of schedule, so I can walk out today, my leisurely pace. Uh, Wednesday, Christmas mini concert at noon. Lori Jan is, is uh, heading up a audience sing along. There's going to be a handbell ensemble, the cello, the piano. This organ's going to come to life, and the Advent choir is going to be there. It's going to be great. It's going to be epic. If you want to spend your lunch doing something awesome. Come here on Wednesday at noon. It's going to be great. Also, Wednesday is the dinner, drama, and discussion. I always get the D's wrong. Dinner, drama, and discussion uh, Wednesday at 530 uh, in the fellowship hall. So mini concert right here in this fellow. Wait, this isn't a fellowship hall. In this sanctuary at noon. And then in the fellowship hall at 530 for dinner, dinner, drama, and discussions. Whew. Uh, then our Christmas services start. Uh, so Saturday, December 23rd, there is a service of healing and remembrance. So the way I like to describe this is more silent night and away in a manger, less joy to the world, hark the herald angels sing. Not everybody is in the place where we want to scream from the rooftops, joy to the world. Although, great sermon today. Great sermon. Um, but if you're not in that place and you want a more somber remembrance type service, five o'clock on December 23rd. We're having the service right here. Christmas Eve services on Sunday, one o'clock, five o'clock, seven o'clock, 11 o'clock. The contemporary service is at five o'clock. That's the contemporary version. Uh, one, seven, and 11 are traditional services. The easy way for me to remember this, we only have services on prime numbers. For those math people out there, that's helpful. Thank you. There you go. I got a thumbs up back there, right? Prime numbers. We'll talk about three later. But anyway, so uh, all those services on Sunday, as Pastor Jeremy mentioned, there are no services in the morning. So that is a Sunday morning. So our 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock a.m. worship services will not happen, just the afternoon evening services. Okay, everybody's nodding. We're good. Um, reminder, the worship toolboxes that are here for the, for the kids and the young at heart, to take if they'd like. If the parents could take a look and see if there's anything missing from those when you put them back, it'd be greatly appreciated. Notify Pastor Alicia if you get a chance to say, hey, we're missing a candle. 
Just an example. The crayons are missing. Something like that. Uh, just let Pastor Alicia know. Rudy, do you have Bible study today? Yes, he does. Bible study in the administrative building right after this service. That's all I have. Please stand for the blessing. So let's give it up to the Youth Chime Choir. Did they do a good job during communion? Awesome. Love when they play. Uh, and the reason uh, that Pastor Alicia's brother is here, her youngest brother, she has four of them, by the way. She's in the middle, if people didn't know that. Is It was Pastor Alicia's birthday yesterday, and she said, don't make a big deal about it. And you don't tell me that, because that's like the worst thing you can tell me. So we make a big deal about it. So I'm going to have Pastor Alicia come up here, and we're going to sing you happy birthday. Most awkward I've ever seen, Pastor Alicia. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad I can, glad I can give you that gift. <laughs> Receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you joy. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.